Have you ever tried to search composition guideline on Google? If you tried before, you might notice that there are plenty of them out there, like top 10 composition guideline, or maybe 20 extension compositions guideline, or even up to 35, there are plenty of them. I think that can be very confusing, especially to someone that is new to photography. Too much information can be a bad thing, and this can make you feel overwhelmed. You don't even know where should you start. So, to keep things simple for you, I picked out the 5 most commonly used composition for landscape photography. For some people, there can be more than 5, but regardless of which composition that you are referring to, most likely they are going to fit to one of these 5 compositions here. So, not 10, not 20, but only 5 compositions. Let's start to introduce them. If you're interested in learning more on how to photograph the Milky Way and also how to process the photo to bring out the detail and the color of the Milky Way, I have a dedicated workshop for this. To find out more about the workshop, you can check out the link in the below description of this video. The first one is definitely the rule of thirds. If you have a photo, you draw two vertical lines and two horizontal lines to place the photo into nine equal rectangles, you will have four intersection points. By putting your subject at one of these points here, it produces a better composition like this photo here. Also, notice that I'm also using the row of the composition to compose the sky and the ground, having one third of the frame for the sky and two thirds for the ground. Landscape photographers often compose in such a way so that people will focus more on their subject on the ground, not the sky. The sky is used to make the photo more interesting like the light rays here. Here is another photo that using the rule of third compositions. This time, I have two subjects in the frame. One is the mountain, and the secondary subject is the Milky Way here. I like previously how I gave two-thirds of the frame for the sky. Now I use two-thirds for the sky and one-third for the ground. My main subject is still something that on the ground here, but because of the Milky Way is huge, you won't be able to fill the Milky Way in the one-third of the frame which is why I put two thirds for the sky here. Also, because that I put mountain on one side of the photo and the Milky Way on another side of the photo, this creates a visual balance to the composition because both subjects look equally interesting. If I put both my subjects on one side, the composition is going to look a bit imbalanced because one side tends to be more interesting and another side got nothing to show here. Like this photo here, both the Milky Way and the person is on the left side. And there's nothing on the right side, so try to avoid composition like this. Phew, that's a lot to say for the row of third. Now, let's move to the next one, which is the center compositions. It's pretty straightforward as the name stated here. You just put your main subject in the center of the frame. This is commonly used to photograph a scenery with reflection, so that you can showcase both the reflection and also the sky equally. Like this photo here, half for the sky, half for the reflection, and my main subject is right at the center of the frame. Here's another example. Having both the sky and reflection split into half and focus on the mountain and the light rays here. Next, which is the top one, is the foreground subject. Usually, you can split a landscape photo into three different sections, which is foreground, middle ground, and the background. By putting a good foreground subject, you can add more depth to the photo and make the photo look more 3D. Here's one of my photos that included a foreground subject, which is a huge boulder at the Moraki Boulder Beach in New Zealand. The boulder is very interesting here, and there are a few dots of stars that reflect on the water here. Notice that by including this foreground subject here, it gave a sense of distance, indicate that this boulder is close to the viewer and the Milky Way is in the background. Another example here, I included the pink lotus flower as my foreground subject in the frame. Move to the fourth composition, which is the leading lines. By making good use of lines and shapes in similar patterns, you can get your viewer eyes to move to focus on your main subject in your photo. Like this photo here, I use the light trails as the leading lines to bring the viewer to see the photo from the bottom left to the frame all the way to the Mount Cook, which is my main subject in this photo. Also, notice that I'm following the rule of third composition here by having one third for the sky and two third for the ground. 
Another leading line example, this time I use the walkway of the Jack D as the leading line to lead the viewer to focus on the center of the frame here. It's also a centered composition, which I put the fisherman hut in the middle of the frame. After the leading line, finally, the last composition is the framing composition. Framing is less common compared to the compositions that I mentioned earlier. Framing refers to using any elements on a scene to create a frame within your frame. For example, this photo of the Federal Mosque in Malaysia. I was using the frame of the doorway to frame. It's also using the center composition. One more example here, a selfie photo of mine. I hope you don't mind that. I used the stacked story gigs to create a frame in the photo. Also, you can see that I'm using leading line here. Okay, that's all the 5 most commonly used compositions for landscape photography. If you follow either one of them, definitely it won't go wrong. Also, I mentioned that sometimes a photo can have multiple compositions applied to it. But that doesn't mean that the more the better. It all depends on a shooting location. So just pick the one that best suits the situation. So before I end this video, I'm going to give you a test. Look at this photo here. Tell me what composition that it is using. And you can answer that by leaving your comment in this video. That's all for this video. I hope you like it. I may want to talk more on composition in the future. Do let me know what you think about it. Also, if you think this video is helpful, feel free to share it and like the video. And don't forget to subscribe to my video channel so that you won't miss out any future episode. So, see you again in the next video.